Hi, I'm Denise from the Ensemble team, and I'll show you how to analyze sequence variants using VEP. I've got a list of six SNPs that vary between cases and controls from my sequencing study. Note that although my example contains six variants only, I can use VEP for thousands of variants. I will use VEP, the variant effect predictor, to find out the functional consequences of my list of six variants on genes and transcripts annotated in Ensemble. Go to the main page of Ensemble, www.ensemble.org. To get to VEP, I can either click on Tools or on the VEP icon over here. This page describes VEP and gives a few examples on what you can use VEP for. On the right-hand side, we list the two different ways to access the variant effect predictor, through our web interface and through our standalone Perl script. Click on the documentation links for more information. From this page, you can also launch the web interface and download the latest version of our VEP Perl script. Let's now have a closer look at the left-hand side menu of this page. We've got four links there. The web interface, web script, data formats, and FAQ. Let's click on the data formats to explore the different input formats that VEP accepts, such as a list of variant identifiers, VCF files, and HGVS coordinates. You can also view some examples of these different formats for both SNPs, and CNVs. Let's now launch the web interface. You can run VEP for any species in Ensemble. My variants were described in humans, so I will choose human as my species. But you can use VEP for any other species in Ensemble. There are different formats accepted by VEP. When I choose any of these formats, a different example will appear in my VEP format. Let's choose the Ensemble default format for VEP. This format is simply a list of genomic coordinates, a list of variants, and strand information. In this default example, we have one SNP, one indel, and a larger structural variant. Let's paste in the data from my sequencing project, which contains six variants, all of them SNPs. Note that I can upload my file too. Hover over the question mark to find out the size limit for file upload, which is 50 megabytes. I can also provide a URL containing my variants. Let's now have a look at the output options for VEP before running the job. There are three options, with a brief description next to each of them. Identifiers and frequency data, extra options, and filtering options. Let's expand the first one. Hover over the question mark for a brief definition. The VEP can also tell me whether or not my variants are known. and provide a DB SNP ID. This option is on by default, and if I click on the drop-down menu, 
I can choose to view them and compare the alleles. If you don't want this information, simply select No. Let's now move on to the extra options. Expand the field to see the different data available. Some of them are already selected by default, such as transcript biotype, sift and polyfem predictions, and information on regulatory regions. Click on the drop-down menus if you want to change the options for SIFT, Polyfen, and Get Regulatory Region Consequences. Finally, there are also different options for filtering. Let's expand this field. If my variants are co-located with known variants from DBSNIP, for example, I can choose to see the allele frequency obtained from the 1000 Genomes project. Let's do that. Click on Advanced Filtering, and from the drop-down menu, select Include Only to filter for variants with minor allele frequency greater than, for example, 1%. You can change this frequency if you want to. I will change it to 0.1%. The last thing to do now is to choose which population from the 1000 Genomes Project I want to get data for. This can be done via the drop-down menu. I will leave it as the 1000 combined population. For more details on the samples from the 1000 Genomes Project, have a look at their website. I'm now ready to run the job. Let's click on View Results. And look at the summary statistics first. This show, among other things, the number of overlapped genes and transcripts, how many of my variants are novel and known, and whether or not my variants overlap regulatory features annotated by ensemble. Let's have a look at the pie charts now. The first one shows all possible consequence terms from the Sequence Ontology project. Have a look at our documentation page for a list of all consequence terms. The consequence terms are color-coded and this is consistent across all variation pages in the Ensemble browser website. The second pie chart shows a breakdown of all different consequence terms under the coding category. For my variants, the only coding consequence type is missense variant. Please refer to the Sequence Ontology website for a complete list of other types of coding consequence terms. Let's now have a look at the results table. You can collapse the summary statistics to view this table, or you can simply scroll down in the page. The results are returned on a table format, which can be downloaded as VCF, VEP, or text formats. Hover over the eye for more information on how to navigate the result table. I can choose to view all variants at once by clicking on All. If I click, for example, on the number one, 
I will view only one variant position at a time. Then navigate to the next position by clicking on the arrow. Let's go back to O. For each position, VEP reports the genes and features that my variants overlap with. Click on the Ensemble Gene ID and Ensemble Transcript ID for pop-up window with extra information. Please note that for a single variant, many different consequence terms can be assigned to. This is due to the different alternatively spliced transcripts that have been annotated. Now, scroll along the page to see additional columns in this results table. You can see, for example, SIFT and polyphen algorithms that predict how the deleterism is sense variant might be. Click on the location link to jump to the region in detail view of the Ensemble browser. You can also show and hide columns in the table. if you want to add and remove them. The existing variation column will show ISIDs already available in dbSNP. For my six variants, only two of them are known. That information is also available from the summary statistics. I can also filter my results from this table. Just hover over the eye for more information. From the drop-down menu, I can choose any filter such as consequence, and enter, for example, 3' prime UTR variant. Click on Add. The filtered data can be downloaded as a VCF, VEP, or text format. I can edit the filters or remove them. Click on the spreadsheet icon to download the entire table or only what I see. I can share these results by clicking here and I can also download this view as CSV. If I want to run another job just click on Variant Effect Predictor and then click on the new VEP job. Previous jobs will be maintained. You can save, edit previous jobs or delete them from this table. That's all folks. Have a look at our web documentation and if you have any questions, just drop us a line. Thank you very much for watching and happy webbing!